Heather Duplessy Allen. The Australian state of New South Wales has rolled out a new camera system designed to catch drivers using cell phones behind the wheel. Check this out. The portable cameras are being set up across the state in unknown locations and without warning signs. A trial earlier this year caught some caught more than 100,000 drivers illegally using a phone at the wheel. There are some concerns about the technology, though, and criminal and traffic lawyer Michael Mantaj is with us now. Michael, hello. Hello, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Tell me, how does this work? Uh, the technology is, uh, uh, as I understand it, relatively simple. There's a camera which is mounted on some sort of a high pole or, or an overpass. It takes pictures of drivers as they are passing by. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's able to take pictures through the windscreen. Now, um, those pictures then go through two levels of review. The first level is an uh, automatic level where an um, artificial intelligence software algorithm uh, picks the particular photographs that are of concern and then a human being reviews those mm-hmm. and then um, it's up to then to that reviewer to decide whether or not a fine should be issued. And so what, the, the, the whole purport of this thing is to try to see what you're doing in your vehicle. Well, that's right, yes. yes. Okay. But what if, though, what if I'm using, let's say I'm eating a chocolate bar and it looks like I'm using a cell phone, what happens then? Well, that really depends on the law that is, accompanies these cameras. The problem with uh, uh, these cameras in New South Wales is not so much the technology, but rather the law, because the government has used the opportunity of, of introducing these cameras to try and introduce a new law that will say that if a, a picture taken by one of these cameras shows a driver holding an object, and by that they mean any object at all, then it is presumed that that object is a mobile phone and that driver can then get a fine. Uh, and then it's up to that driver to spend thousands of dollars and, and many um, uh, days in court to try and potentially prove otherwise, which is unjust in my view. It seems to me like this has the potential to create some real log jams in courts. Oh, I think it does. If you uh, the, the estimates, I think, are that um, uh, once these cameras are rolled out, um, that there will be hundreds of thousands of fines issued. Uh, and if only a small percentage of those people who have received a fine decide that they want to uh, challenge the fine in court, that could be thousands of extra cases every year. There must be. Okay, so it seems to me, as you say, it's sort of, it's sort of shifting the onus of proof tips the, the judicial system somewhat on its head, right? There must be some thinking behind it that, that, that there is a justification for doing this. Is the thinking that you shouldn't have anything in your hand at all when you're behind the wheel? Uh, I don't think so. That can't be the thinking because uh, drivers typically and often have things in their hand and, in yeah. fact, sometimes they're required to have things in their hand. Uh, if, for example, if you're exiting a car park, you will need a ticket to put into the ticket machine. Um, you know, people are entitled to have a, a, a sip of coffee or a sandwich or a bar of chocolate whilst driving. Uh, the, the thinking seems to be, uh, it, it seems to me no more than um, we want to catch as many drivers as possible. So we will make it as easy as possible for the government to prosecute people. Um, and there doesn't seem to have been much thought or at least much concern for the position that that puts drivers in. Okay, let's put ourselves in the position of a driver who has got a chocolate bar in their hand and is accused of having a cell phone. How on earth do you prove that that wasn't a cell phone? Well, that will be very difficult. To some extent, it will depend on the quality of the photograph, but Mm. if the photograph um, creates some doubt as to whether or not um, this object was uh, a mobile phone, then the driver is in a very invidious position because Mm. unlike many offences, they're not detected straight away. The driver will only be advised that they've been fined probably weeks, maybe even a month or so after the event. And then how is the driver supposed to know precisely what it is they were doing at that particular moment in time when that photograph was taken? Absolutely. And what what is the quality of these photos? How grainy are they? Uh, the ones that I have seen are all black and white, which is uh, not a good start. Mm-hmm. And the quality is highly variable because it all depends. The, the cameras are of good quality, but as you can probably imagine, it all depends on a number of different factors like the the time of day, the amount of daylight available, uh, the angle that it's taken on, how the driver is holding the object, whether it's obscured or not. So it, it's in, in some cases, it's very clear that someone is holding a mobile phone. And that's fine. They should be fined. 
but there's no need to create a presumption for that. If it's clear, then the, the present law would account for that. Uh-huh. And in other cases, it's, uh, there, there really is often a doubt as to what this particular object is that the driver's holding. Okay, so a couple of things. What are the fines worth? Uh, the fine is not the probably the biggest issue. It's uh, 300 and something dollars uh, Australian. Uh, the biggest issue in Australia, and obviously I don't know how this op- will operate in, uh, in your country if it's introduced, is that uh, it, there's a, a, a five demerit point um, penalty attached to it. Mm-hmm. And we have things called double demerit weekends in Australia where uh, that can double to 10 demerit points. Mm. Bearing in mind a driver only has 13 points that they can accrue, that means that one offence can effectively mean a loss of a license, and and that can mean a loss of a livelihood. Yeah, goodness, this does seem a bit harsh. Um, Okay, and what is the public saying? Is there any support for this? Uh, I think the public, it's fair to say, are divided. Uh, I've I've seen um, many comments supporting um, these cameras, and I've seen many comments opposing them. Uh, One of the problems is that... Uh, there's a lot of cynicism that these sorts of cameras are more about revenue raising than they are about public safety. Mm. And when these unfair presumptions are introduced, that only uh, feeds into that cynicism.